Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and are you looking for a simple, easy, no database setup, no you know time spent configuring with long instructions, simple monitoring system so you can get really high fidelity, real time to the second monitoring data out of your Linux servers? then net data is probably what you want to look at. It is a great tool I've been using for a while, and I want to talk about their dashboard online, how you get it set up and configured. I've talked about it a while ago, but boy, has this project improved over the years. But one thing they've really done right is keeping it simple, simple to deploy, simple to manage, simple to set up. So we're going to cover how to get it going, and it's just a one-line click. That part's going to be easy, which data you can get out of it, and how it differs from some other products that are in that market space, essentially, and why it's still a good one to use, even if you're also using those other ones. Before we dive into the details of this video, let's first... Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Architected for speed, automated for easy. Slash your time to detect and troubleshoot and resolve infrastructure and performance problems with the permanently free, because it's fully open source, zero configuration, I can attest to that, configuration tool that makes infrastructure monitoring and troubleshooting dramatically easier for both experts and beginners. So in short, what they're saying here is they don't just produce pretty dashboards, they produce useful dashboards for monitoring. And yes, we'll show how to get it set up and it is really just a one-click install, but it's open source. If you want to go through and compile everything yourself, you can do that as well. Now, what does it monitor? Well, over 200 as of June of 2022, different applications and integrations and a lot of details about your Linux server. So it's not just monitoring disk and CPU usage, but it can actually dig in and monitor Apache or Elasticsearch or even ZFS. There's a long list and these are all auto configured when you run the installer. You don't have to go through and set each of these up. It finds them, it sees those services running, and then adds them to the pool of data. We'll get into how that works momentarily, including we'll set it up on my gray log system and show you how I can see the Elastic queries and the MongoDB queries as they're running. But before we get to the installer, I want to talk about what net data is and what net data is not. It is wonderful for that real-time monitoring, but it is not something such as Zabbix, which I've talked about on this channel, that provides you that two-way communication where you can say, here's some type of information that Zabbix has gathered, some type of anomaly it's found, and then we want to perform an action based on that information. It is not a server client type of setup. It is a agent that allows you to view a dashboard. This dashboard does not have any detailed information in terms of personal information about you. I say it like that because it's not giving up IP addresses. It's not giving up other than the name of the processes that are running. It's not giving up a lot of data about it because it is privacy oriented in that way. I bring it up because if you're interested in using the NetData Cloud, which we'll be showing in this demo, you're probably wondering well, what data are they gathering about me? And well, there is a limited amount of data they do have on there, but the finite details of your system are not on there. So like the actual data that's coming out of your system, like files that are produced and the contents thereof are not transmitted through net data. But by the way, you do not have to use their cloud. You can completely run this independently. So you're only running it, the agent itself on each of your Linux instances. And that's it. Even if you connect it to the cloud, you still have local access and we'll show how that works. Automatic one line installation script. Do you want automatic updates? Default is enabled, but we can uncheck that. Do you want nightly or stable releases? You can uncheck that and choose which one you want. Do you want to contribute to anonymous statistics? They give you an easy opt-out just by unchecking it. We're going to want to participate in all these things. And what they're doing for each one of these I check or uncheck is just adding a different command line parameter on here. And once you have the command line parameters that you want, so we'll go ahead and put that back on there. We're just going to click the little copy command, that command into my Ubuntu instance right here. Press enter. And what's the sudo password? So we'll type that really quick. It's going to run a quick update. And we're doing this all in real time. Say yes. And 
Setting up net data repo, connecting. Got to download real quick. Yes. And we're done. NetData is installed. That's it. It automatically opens up on port 19999. So all you have to do is go to the IP address of this machine, that port, and instantly see NetData. Now, we just loaded on this one, so nothing interesting is going to be in here. So I'm going to bounce over to my local Graylog server, and we're going to run some queries against it, and we're going to show you what the NetData dashboard looks like when you're looking at it locally. Now, before we go to the dashboard, I want to make a note that I did make a couple changes to the default netdata.com dashboard. What I did was set up memory mode to be DB engine because normally net data only stores things inside of memory. So those data and statistics should be lost with a reboot. If you set memory mode DB engine, set a page cache size, DB engine, multi-host disk space, how much disk space you want it to have. And this is all within the documentation. That's all you have set up. I did not actually do any database setup. I just had to put these lines in. And the final line I did was machine learning enabled. It's a new feature they've added. So I went ahead and turned it on. It's not on by default as of the recording of this video in June, 2022. Now here's the local net data dashboard. We have system overview here. We can jump between CPU, memory, Look at our networking stack. Look at our network interfaces if you want to know how much data is traversing those interfaces. Users, what this users are using. And you can see we have a MongoDB and an Elasticsearch user. By clicking on any of these, you can filter down to exactly which user is using how much processes. And that's all I'm doing is clicking on any of this. All the changes I make or even any of the modifications I make by clicking the little gear icon down here, this is all just set with session cookies. Nothing you do within this panel this interface actually interacts with the agent it's all just read only data and you're just setting cookies on your system to remember the options that you chose such as this one right here where do you want to refresh the charts i say always because what i want to do is go back over here to system overview and I have my gray log interface pulled up on another window and I want to run a couple queries in the dashboard so you can see the different types of information that this will show, including the query and how much data that uses and gets you the idea of how you would drill down when you're troubleshooting, such as, well, queries running slow. We'll start with going right here and just say we're going to keep this at the last five minutes or actually let's look at the last 12 hours first. So, so if we lay last 12 hours, hit apply. Last 12 hours, generally, this system is really, well, barely using anything, eh, maybe 10% of CPU across. So pretty slow, low overall usage. Go back to the last five minutes, hit apply. And this is where I logged in and did at least one query. And it's, you see it pushed the CPU usage all the way up. And I'm going to do another query real quick. All right, did another query. And we see the CPU usage ramping up here. And we can probably jump over to disk usage and Yep, this usage going to 100% because I told it to query all records available to look for a couple different things. Now, as I said, other applications such as Elastic and Mongo are detected. So here's our mongo.local, what queries are done in Mongo. Go over here to Elasticsearch, what queries are being done in Elastic. And any of these time slices, if we pause this and let's go ahead and go like last 30 minutes or last 15 minutes. You can even drill down to a very specific time and hit apply. And that applies to everything across the board. You can even stop it from playing. You want to pause it and look it under. Matter of fact, instead of the last five minutes, we're going to go even narrower and say just in the last uh, three minutes. So we'll put a two there, hit apply. And it's paused on what's going on in these last couple minutes just for that time frame and it's not playing real time but this gives you that drill down maybe you want to drill it down even further and that's where that granularity comes in we'll say here 207 actually we'll do this one at six hit apply and right there is each piece of data that it has available for that so you can see all of them are like that because we went a little further into the future than we needed to so let's go back to the last five minutes hit apply and there's that data and if you want to keep going back and forth you can keep kind of drilling down here or just go back to force play force it to keep playing now one of the other options you can do is hold down the shift key and drill down without having to try to figure out the times so if i'm holding the shift key i can actually we'll grab this right here and we can narrow it down to just this time slice. So 1704 to 1706, it's drilled down to this section right here. And if there's too much data, you can always say remove user or only show this. 
or only show each one of these. Maybe you only want to see the IO wait times or you want to see everything. And that goes down. If we look down at disk, you can also, do you only want to see the writes? Or do you only want to see the reads? They give you a couple different options. And obviously the reads are really, when you're doing a bunch of database queries in Elastic, well, it's going to have a pretty heavy read load. And it did right here at 1705. If you can correlate that with something you know you're doing on a system at that time, you know, all right, this query was requiring, you know, X amount of CPU usage, or in this case, this much of disk usage to understand where the problem is. And uh, it's pretty obvious if we go up to the top here, we weren't using too much CPU during that time period. We were using 60%, but our disk usage is where it really was. Now you can set this up and go to each one of your servers, bookmark them and set them up for, you know, individually viewing them, or you can connect these to the NetData Cloud. And that's where we're going to go next. The NetData Cloud is really interesting because it doesn't care where the servers are so long as they can get to the NetData Cloud and send the data there. How do you get them in there? Let's cover that really quickly. We're going to click on the gear icon again, and we're going to go over to our nodes. I'm going to blur out the link here because you could add everything to my dashboard if you copy that link down. I don't really need more things in my dashboard, but that's all you have to do to get them connected. When you do that same kickstart deploy, there's a token it adds to connect it to your cloud instance of net data. You sign up for an account and this consolidates that in there. You can also take existing ones you have and add that token again to the existing install and get it into the cloud dashboard. Why would you want to put it into a cloud dashboard, you might ask, and does this break my local? Well, as we've seen, I have gray log in here and we're going to go over to my nodes and you can see the different nodes I have. I kind of like the view it gives. You can see the machine learning is on and then we have my gray log instance right here and we still have the same amount of information. Matter of fact, I can put it side by side with this. You can even go a little step further. Like here's my Unify server, or here's my Exo pool of Zen. And we can take that one out. We'll just go back to the Graylog one here. And hey, there's that same data that I had. Now the cloud one looks just a little bit different because of the way they run their cloud. Uh, you get the metric correlation. That's why I turned on the machine learning. I wanted to put a little more data in here. And they have a couple extra tools that they can do if you tie it to your cloud. As I said, this is an option and not a requirement. You can just view each of your servers locally as needed to get those statistics. But I think it's cool that they have this as an added feature, especially because you look at some of the dashboards. And as I kind of learned my way around this, because this is something I've only recently started playing with those other dashboards, it's pretty slick because when you put a YouTube demo dashboard together, we want to add a chart, you pick which nodes you'd like, maybe our XO pool of Zen, and then you can go through and pick whatever other metric you want. So if you have a lot of servers that maybe in different ways are related to each other, the dashboard will allow you to create a view of each one of the components that matters that run on each individual server and then have that time slice synchronized between all of them to understand the data that is coming from each one or resources that are being used so it can aid you in the troubleshooting of those particular systems. Now, one of the last things I want to cover here is what about the cost of running something in the cloud. Nothing in the cloud is free unless I'm the product, right? Well, they have a business model in a way they're going to monetize, so I won't leave that unaddressed. Free unlimited monitoring and troubleshooting. As I said, you can load the agent locally and not have to deal with the cloud at all, but they do have a pretty solid plan here. Really simple. They have a paid plan coming. So your free plan is unlimited host containers, metrics, custom, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down here. And they're going to offer paid plan on a couple other extra features, training certifications, 24 seven support, role-based access versus kind of basic access. And the way they built their distributed model and platform, it's generally pretty easy for them to add users without a high compute cost for each of these users. So it's sustainable to way they have it configured that they're not trying to pull the rug out from under you. And they have a page where they're documenting how they're putting their business plan together. They are first committed to being free and open source, which is important. I've actually talked to one of the engineers and that's kind of what clued me on to looking at it again. I've been using it, but I wasn't using their cloud. I was just, you know, had some local instance installed, but never really played with some of the new advanced features. I kind of let it auto update and, you know, took a look at it here and there and said, okay, this is pretty cool. But after understanding it a little better and integrating some of their cloud features, I can really see where a lot of people are interested in this. So for you home lab people that are just cloud adverse, I get it. No problem. You never have to use it. For those of you that have a, well, a big sysadmin job and a lot of systems and a lot of cloud systems yourself, and you're looking for a place to monitor them, I think NetData is a pretty cool tool to be able to do that. And once again, it's open source. You could always build your own consolidated dashboards and things like that if you really wanted to and play around with it. They've got some pretty cool features. They got great documentation on customizing things, modifying things, and 
you know, really making it fit your use case. But overall, that one line setup to make it easy means it's a pretty fun project to get started with and start looking at all of your data that's on your servers in terms of, you know, resource usage and everything else. So leave your comments and thoughts down below or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.